G'day guys and welcome back to yet another adventure. This time we're taking on Western Australia. We've got ourselves a traveler's camper van. Let's get started. Currently in Perth, it is rainy and cold, so the plan is we're going to rock it all the way up to the top and then make our way down the coast very slowly over the course of 10 days. But in saying that, we have a lot of driving to do, so we're going to hit the road. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> Guilty. Turquoise Bay, this has got to be the number one beach in Exmouth and it is gorgeous. Have a look at the colour of this water. So we've made it up to Exmouth just in time for sunset and we're watching it from the iconic lighthouse. This is one of the best places in town to catch sunset for sure. But tomorrow we've got a big day planned. One of the best things you can do in Exmouth is go out on a whale shark tour. We're very lucky though because my sister lives here and she has a boat so she's going to be taking us out on that and we've got a pretty good day planned. So I just wanted to jump in here and do a quick little recap because we basically had one of the best days out in the boat ever. We started off the day looking for whale sharks, which we were able to find pretty quickly, and I got my first ever swim with one. Just after that, we got a call up from a friend saying they'd spotted a pod of orcas in the area. After meeting up with them, we were surprised to see the pod had a very cute little calf as a new addition to the family. After following these guys south for about an hour, we turned the boat around and went for a snorkel. We jumped into the deep water where we were able to do some free diving and I got a nice little swim with a manta ray, an eagle ray, and a couple sharks for good measure. Finally, as we headed back into the shallows, we spotted what looked like a massive tiger shark swimming around on the sand. We jumped in for a swim and he must have smelt the tuna in my sister's hand because he came straight in for a look. As he got closer, we realized it wasn't a tiger shark, it was a three meter hammerhead. He definitely got the heart racing. And to cap it all off, our last encounter of the day and probably the rarest of them all, what we thought was another shark cruising around on the sand ended up being a very friendly dugong. What an incredible day. It doesn't get much better than this. But with our time in Exmouth coming to a close, it was time to get back on the road. Step out and enter in. There's no time, no 
Coming off an absolute blinder of a start to the trip, we continued heading south and made plans to visit a place called Quabba Station. Although we might have used a bit too much of our good luck in Exmouth because things were about to take a turn for the worse. Okay, we found ourselves in a little bit of a predicament. We were heading north up to Red Bluff and the road was getting worse and worse and I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna have to call it. This might be the end of the road for the old traveler's van. I don't see how it's gonna get through this it's looking like it's getting pretty deep over here, and if we go through that, we are 100% getting bogged. So we had a good run, but I think we're gonna have to call it a day, turn this one around, and figure out what we're doing today. Little did we know, our bad luck was just getting started. Good morning, welcome to the blowholes. So I was flying my drone over this uh, huge swell here and then all of a sudden my battery just switches to 0% remaining and I quickly put it into sports mode, fly it back to the rocks. Uh, it crashed somewhere here. Oh my god, here it is. I made it just, just onto land on time but I was about 10 meters from the ocean behind me and it just started coming down. Holy shit. So as you can see right behind me, the waves are crashing right here. It's coming up behind me. I think if I uh, hadn't have got here in time, a wave would have washed it away pretty quickly. But it must have hit a rock on the way down. So I've never seen that happen before. Uh, I was flying with about 20% remaining and then just switched to zero. And it started coming down really, really quick. So I quickly flew it into the shore, obviously came down with too much speed and then crashed into the rock. And that was the end of this guy. Uh, the back propeller no longer rotates and the gimbal is absolutely cooked. May have a fiddle with the repairs but I think we're down a drone. Good morning everyone from Calvary National Park. It is very early, the sun is not even up yet, but uh, we're going to go check out a place called Nature's Window. This is our third night in Calvary now. We were only meant to stay here one night, but we've actually been blown away by how good this place is, so we booked in for a few more nights and uh, we'll head down south tomorrow. But we're actually in a bit of a hurry right now because the sun is just about to pop its head up and I need to get down to this Nature's Window. So 
it's just about time for sunset here in Calgary and I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the inside of the van. Uh, we're going to cook up a meal and the kitchen's pretty cool so I thought I'd show you that. Starting here we have the kitchen sink which is hooked up to the water. We have storage for food and pots and pans. Uh, here we have a microwave and a fridge and the best part is the dual gas burners here. So tonight we're going to be cooking a specialty of mine which is snags and bread. It's a pretty simple meal but that's good when you're camping you want to keep it simple. Uh, so let's get into it. Never mind, I think we'll cook something else. So what you want to do is just rinse off your sausage. Next up, we're going to want to dry off our sausages. We're just going to roll that into the paper towel like that. So over here I have my two good sausages. What's really important, you want to keep an eye on these. You definitely don't want to mix them up with these two, which will be palming off to someone else. Nice and easy, and these things are full of oil, so you can just whack them straight on the grill. Now we've got these two sags nice and dry, we're just going to pop them on the pan, and just remember, they're on the left. Alright, so once you get those sausages brown on each side, this is the tricky part, so watch closely. I'll pop you there, then you want to grab your snag, whack it right on there. Next comes the sauce, apply generously, and then bang, you got your fresh bunning snag. Dinner is served, there you go. Enjoy. Did you put a hot dog in a piece of bread? No, it's a sausage and bread. It's a specialty here. So. Some people are so ungrateful. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. Hey, so I thought I'd jump in here and just share some of the things that we learned along the trip that would help you if this is a trip you want to do yourself because at the end of the day that's what this channel is all about. It's encouraging you guys to actually get out here and do these things for yourself. So uh, starting with the cost of the trip. To hire the Travelers Camper Van for a week it's only 550 Australian which is very affordable uh, but you do have to be aware that's not the only price you're going to pay. Our other expenses included food and fuel and camping. So to start with food, uh, for two people, for 10 days we spent $409 in food. Which is probably on the higher end because we ate out about 50% of the time. If you want to get that figure lower for yourself, you can just go to the supermarket, buy your own food and cook it all yourself and you'll save a ton of money. The camper van's set up with a full kitchen and fridge and everything so you could probably expect to pay what you would normally spend on groceries in a week. So next up is fuel, and this will probably be your biggest expense. Uh, to give you a rough indication, we spent $420 to get from Perth to Exmouth and back again. And at the time of our trip, uh, fuel was about $1.10 to $1.20 a litre. So the only other real expense that you have to worry about will be camping and accommodation. Uh, obviously you have the van so you can sleep in that. If you're wanting to stay overnight in a national park, you can normally expect to pay $11 per night per person. Other than that, there are a lot of free campsites that you can find, as well as private paid campsites for you to park your camper van in. The best way to find all of these is through an app called Wikicamps. It costs $7, uh, we decided to purchase it. If you don't want to do that, there's also the Travelers app, which has a lot of the same information, but is actually free. Wikicamps probably has more campsites listed in the app, but they, uh, they both got options. Okay, and now on to my tips and recommendations for the trip. My first would be don't drive at night. It is way too risky. There's kangaroos all over the road. While you're driving during the day, you'll probably see a lot of dead kangaroos on the road. And that's basically because people are driving at night. They don't see the kangaroos. The kangaroos get blinded by the headlights and they unfortunately get hit. Not only is it a traumatic experience to go through hitting a kangaroo, but you're gonna smash up your car and it's probably gonna be a couple thousand dollars in damage. So be careful in the mornings at dusk and try not to drive late into the night because there's a very good chance that you'll see a kangaroo and you might hit it. Okay, tip number two. You're definitely, definitely going to want a good playlist. You're gonna be racking up a lot of hours behind the wheel. Uh, so you might as well find a good Spotify playlist and jam to that. If you're looking for a good playlist, you can have a look at the one that I created for this trip. Uh, I'll put the Spotify playlist down in the description if you want. <laughs> and the final tip would be definitely consider getting a four-wheel drive. Because we found a lot of the places that we wanted to check out were actually limited and couldn't actually get to and we didn't realize until we had made plans to go and see them. So a lot of these rental companies do also offer four-wheel drive options, so just, I don't know, go back, do some more research and weigh up the pros and cons of each. 
and I just wanted to note that there were some places we visited on this trip that didn't quite make it into this video uh, just because we didn't get as much footage there and this video is getting pretty long. Karajini National Park is absolutely beautiful and definitely worth checking out. Monkey Mai is a very popular spot and all of Shark Bay. Coral Bay is beautiful as well. It was pretty crowded when we were there but it's a really nice stop. If you really want to rack up some kilometers, you can head up to Broome, uh, which is an awesome place, but that's one I would definitely recommend a four-wheel drive for. And there is a ton more to see in the south of Western Australia, which we have not checked out yet, but looks just as breathtaking and deserves a whole nother trip on its own. Okay, and that brings us just about to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope some of those tips were helpful for you and encourage you to come and do this trip yourself. If you enjoyed this episode please let me know by leaving a like down below and fun fact drones aren't cheap uh, this ended up being quite an expensive episode with the crash of the drone uh, if you would like to help out the channel at all please consider subscribing it would really help out right now but that wraps up the video i hope you're all well wherever you might be in the world uh, stay safe and see you next time